needed a, a victory there to keep your, your season alive and, and the players delivered just that. Just how happy are you with that performance and that result? Yeah, the performance I thought was excellent, especially first half. I thought we uh, were exceptional in every aspect of the game. I know people break down or dissect the game you know, when you have the ball and done have the ball and, uh, and we do that. And I thought we'd come out on top in every aspect of it. Obviously, we were only one goal ahead at half-time, which was probably the disappointing thing of a, a very polished first half. Second half, it never the same in football, unfortunately, as much as you want it to be. Um, but then we showed the other side of what we're able to do at times by defending, putting our bodies on the line, uh, defending set plays very, very well, last-ditch tackles and blocks, uh, and obviously then got the goal at the end of the, the half, at the second half as well. What's the, the thinking of having Keanu Bacchus in that more advanced role when there are international experience tens on the bench like yeah. James Troisi and Nicolai Moura as well? Well, Jimmy, Jimmy, the one with Jimmy Troisi was just Jimmy's played 20-plus games. It was just giving him a rest from last game. That's why he didn't start and Keanu started. I think Keanu had two or three games on the bench and looked ready to play. And you, when, you get, when you're with them in training, you get a feel of when they're ready to play, you have to let them loose sometimes. And he scored last week, Keanu. I thought he was very good. And I wanted, I thought we could cause him problems, which we did in the first half by keeping that shape. So Keanu's got legs. He's obviously got different qualities uh, to other players like Nikolai and like Jimmy. Um, but that was the only reason today. Do you see that role was something he can step into? Or was that more of a situation? Yeah, well, if he performs like he has done in the last two games, then for sure he can play in the more advanced role. You know, when I come here six months ago, he was a, he tells me he's a holding midfield player. And he likes to break up play, but he's got more to his game than that. He really has. And, you know, it depends what you want and how you're going to build your team. I'm going to build my team a certain way. and I want certain profiles of players in certain positions, and whether that's a, a connector keeping the ball or whether that's someone who's got legs who can get up and down. Keanu's got legs. So I think if you play him in that sixth role, then sometimes you take away one of his strengths, key strengths, which is his legs. Bernie Abini, um, yeah. fantastic goal tonight, um, was really industrious. Um, how important was it for him to sort of um, get the goal for you guys? Yeah, no, nah, please, please for Bernie. I thought he was very, very strong. I think he probably should have uh, two chances earlier when he got the boys. Uh, the defender pinned in the box. He's got to use what his, his strength is and twist and turn. He does it in training as a as a nine with a back to goal player, uh, and he scores near enough every time. And then the one half chance he has, obviously he turns and shoots, and you know it, it gets us in front in the first half. But no, Bernie's Bernie's very good. Obviously we're touching the surface with Bernie as well. Bernie's a confidence player like all players, so it's important the manager and the coaches get behind him, which we will, um, because you see what he can do when when he's a confident player. At the end of the field, Daniel Margush, um, six saves, um, two of them early, kept you um, sort of on the level um, terms. How happy were you with him? Yeah, very pleased. He's a young keeper who's, who's experienced in his first, first season this year as a regular. And, you know, it's not an excuse, it's a fact where we're at uh, and what I want to try and do at this football club and you know you use Margs it's his first season in professional football really as a regular the same with Thomas Aquilina same as Mark Natter Tate Russell's playing more games Keanu's the only one who's probably played more regular out of the young boys than the rest of them um, and with that you have hiccups you have they make mistakes it's normal human nature is to make mistakes but when people jump on them and want to criticise them when they make mistakes they lose com confidence and when they lose confidence you think it's the wrong player and that lot us as coaches and me as a manager my job is to support them you know not just the, the, the on the field stuff but the off the field stuff as well because the welfare of the players to tap into their minds is crucial for, for coaching Thursday night play Adelaide away and um, you'll know by then if you've still got a chance for the finals um, yeah. how do you approach the week? Like we did this week, you know, we can't control anything else outside of what we do. What we can do is, is put on a performance and if the results happen to fall our way, great. If they don't, you know, we won't be letting up. We're going there to try and put on another performance like we did today because, you know, the, the thing for us this year has been our, our consistency. I know people don't like using that word, but it's a fact. Um, when we're on our day, we're very, very good and we can compete with anyone. Uh, we've not probably been on our day m enough times, which is probably why we are where we are. Uh, we have to accept that, analyse that. And the hardest thing sometimes is look in the mirror and admit where you got it wrong and what you did wrong and then make decisions. But you know, I don't mind looking in the mirror, so it's OK. What, if, what things do you think you've done wrong and what do you think has undermined that consistency? Well, again, you can you can look at it uh, in a number of ways. You know, at the start of the year, I think we weren't scoring enough goals, and I said to the group, you know, we're we're creating chances, but we're not scoring enough goals. 
and we argue, I think we're second or third top goal scorers now. You know, and it's 12 or 13 games later. You know, we were very, very good uh, in our defensive structure and in our, in our defensive play at the start of the year, and we've. We conceded five goals in two games. You know, Melbourne victory away and Perth away, which sometimes uh, over over enlarges the the goal difference. Um, open play goals, we, we're very good. Set pieces have caused us a massive problem this year, and you know, only nine off nine off corners or eight off corners. You know, we're one ahead of two other two or three other teams, and we've had a couple of penalties, uh, dubious penalties, which I've I've spoke about. You know, sometimes they go your way, sometimes they don't, and we've had some deflected free kicks. So we need to address that, and that might be, you know, people talk about zonal marking and man-to-man marking and a little bit of mix of both and things like that. But, you know, you've got to be real as well. You know, it might be personnel, and you've got to find the right pe- people that want to go and head the ball and are willing to go and head the ball in a zonal area or man-to-man marking. And, you know, that's what I've got to do. I've got to analyse that. I've got to reflect on that and see if I've got the right pieces here. And the ones I have will move forward, and the one we haven't, then we won't and we'll, we'll make changes because our aim is to build the club to where we want to get it where it has been a few years ago you know we want to try and get back to that but that doesn't happen overnight you know we're not naive enough to think it does sometimes you can get paper over things you know I want paper over things I'll, I'll tell you as it is um, but it's a work in progress You just mentioned the right people I thought Steve Ugarkovich was brilliant tonight do you think he's going to be one of the keys to having a more consistent Wanderers for the rest of this season and next season? Without a doubt. You know, I've been fortunate enough to work with Stevie twice now while here in Australia and said to you the qualities and the traits he has in that midfield role. You know, I, pro- I wouldn't swap him for anyone else. You know, there's some really good midfield players in this league. There really is. Uh, but he's got everything, and you don't realise how good he is until you work with him. And when you do, then you find out how good he is. You know, I, uh, my job is to help him grow uh, on the field, um, to challenge him, to test him. Because, as you said, with the the Oli Roos now, or soccer Roos, and you know all the Roos, like they say, I want to try and get him into the national team because I think he should. You know, a player with that talent and his confidence. Again, his confidence. Has he has he been at his level this year? Not sure, um, but I know what he can do. And when he, when he performs like that. You know, it wasn't just him today. It was every single player. We mentioned Miles, we mentioned Bernie, you know, Graham, Sass, put in a, and Dylan was excellent as well. They were all excellent. So, but you just got a feeling you got to have core players that are the, the fulcrum of your team because the, the bigger teams, the better teams, the most successful teams in this league, and, and people will talk about Melbourne and, and Sydney, and rightly so because they've been at the top for the last two years. Have a core group of players and they stick together. How I don't know, but you know, I'll leave that for you. Just over to Ed on the Zoom, Ed, if you have anything. Hey, Ed. Yeah, Carl. Yeah, Carl. Congratulations, mate. Um, I guess um, you mentioned pre-game on Fox about a sort of almost a lack of leadership in the dressing room. Uh, are you happy with, given the disappointment of Wednesday, particularly in that first half, how the boys responded out there? Yeah, let, let me um, explain when I say a lack of leadership. I mean a, a lack of vocal leadership. Um, we've got leaders in that locker room that, that lead. You know, you don't have to be a, a, a shouter or a rah-rah person. You know, unfortunately, when you play in Europe and you're part of a European team, you do because you get swallowed up. So I've learned that trait pretty quickly, and, and so has Kenny. You know, maybe that's not the nature here, uh, but the successful teams have got them. They have got leaders that actually make each other accountable, which you need to do. But we've got quiet leaders. And when you're a quiet leader, then obviously you're not a vocal leader. And if you've got to tell your teammates something that's not correct or drag him into a position that he needs to be to make sure that we don't concede off a corner, then that takes a different type of leadership. So that's what I meant with regards to vocal leadership. Um, I wish I could do it for him. I wish I could be up behind him and kick every ball for him. And I am trying to on the sidelines. So it, that might be a, a more vocal leader that we need. Um, but the way they responded, yeah, it's great. You know, it's, it's credit to them today, you know, because from the first moment, and it's not easy because you can feel sorry for yourself and, you know, uh, then don't get the result that you want. Or you can actually just roll your sleeves up and, and, and enjoy and love what you get paid to do. And I said that, you know, you, you don't really realise how lucky and fortunate you are as a player until you're not in the game or when you retire as a player and when you retire as a player you think oh it's great I don't have to do a pre-season or I don't have to run or I... but three months later you're bored when you're sitting at home and you're arguing with your wife All right, that's the reality of where you're at so I say to them don't underestimate the daily grind of it it's, it's such a wonderful thing to be a football player and it will be taken away 
uh, without a doubt. And, it, and as quick as it comes, it quick as it goes. And then you become fish and chip paper, which means there's more news and no one wants to talk about you. Yeah, I guess just finally from me, we saw Tess towards the end there go over on his ankle. Yeah. Pierre saw he played out the game, but I'm assuming he's okay. I think so, yeah. I thought Tass was very good. I thought we had a problem in the first half in relation to that inside channel there. Right-sided player Denzaki was causing us one or two problems in between the, the left-back, left-sided centre-back and our left-wing-back, so we addressed that. Um, but Tass coming, coming in because he's not been in uh, for the last three, four weeks because Mark, young Mark Matt has played was exceptional. And as a young player, it's easy to come off if you get hurt or easy to um, give in. But he didn't. He showed good character today, Tass, because he wanted to carry on the game because he was playing very, very well. So I think I think he's okay.